Welcome back, sixth graders. Our topic today is choosing a government. Let's begin by reading our lesson objectives. By the end of the video, you will be able to identify constituencies across the Bahamas, explain the requirements and the process of registration of voters, and finally, examine how the government is formed prior to a general election. Do you recall what voting areas are called in our country? Yes, constituencies. These areas are defined by parliament. Currently, there are 39 constituencies throughout the Bahamas. Let's view the map of New Providence. Listed are 12 constituencies found on New Providence. Killarney, Golden Isles, Sudden Shore, Tall Pines, Carmichael, South Beach, Seabreeze, Elizabeth, Yamacraw, St. Anne's, Fox Hill, Nassau Village. If neither one of those is the constituency that you reside. Let's view the next slide. Let's read the list for the final 12 constituencies on New Providence. Pinewood, Bamboo Town, Golden Gates, Garden Hills, Mount Moriah, St. Barnabas, Angliston, Marathon, Freetown, Centerville, Beanstown and Grantstown, and Fort Charlotte. If you are a resident of New Providence, you should have heard your constituency. There are five constituencies on the island of Grand Bahama. Central Grand Bahama, East and Grand Bahama, Marco City, Pine Ridge and West End, Grand Bahama and Bimini. By the end of this list, everyone should have heard their constituency. Let's read the additional Family Island constituencies together. Central and South Abaco, North Abaco, Mangrove Key and South Andros. North Andros and the Berry Islands, Cat Island, Rumkey, San Salvador, Central and South Eleuthera, North Eleuthera, the Exomas and Ragged Island, Long Island, Maguana, Inagua, Cricket Island, Acklands, and Longkey, usually referred to as Michael. Who is eligible to vote in the Bahamas? A voter must be a citizen of the Bahamas. Citizens of each constituency have the right by voting to decide who should lead or represent them. A voter must be at least 18 years old. However, not every citizen may vote. People who are mentally ill are not allowed to vote because they are not considered able to make important national decisions. Prisoners who are currently locked up are also denied the right to vote as a part of their punishment. Once you are eligible or able to vote, you should register your name and prove your citizenship. Your name is then added to the voters list. Let's discuss political parties. The first formal political party was the Progressive Liberal Party, PLP, formed in 1953. Then in 1958, the United Bohemian Party, UBP, which was way before our time, was formed. 
Here in the Bahamas, like most democratic countries around the world, we too have major political parties, namely the Free National Movement and the Progressive Liberal Party. Here's a photo showing the symbol representing the FNM party and its slogan, it's the people's time. Here is the PLP symbol and their slogan, believe in the Bahamas. Here is a third party, the Democratic National Alliance, DNA, and their party symbol. Individuals not willing to be a part of any party can present themselves as an independent candidate. Let's review nomination facts. Our constitution states that an election must be held every five years, although it may be more frequent than this. Parliament must be dissolved 21 to 26 days before the date of a general election. This gives each party enough time to prepare its case for election. On nomination day, the candidates for each party must submit their names and pay a deposit of money to the constituency office. If the total number of votes gained by the candidate exceeds one six of the total number of votes polled in a constituency, he or she gets the deposit back. The following shows steps leading to a general election. Firstly, parliament must be dissolved. Secondly, election day is announced. Thirdly, nomination day for all of the candidates. Fourthly, campaign by each political party. And finally, the grand event, election day. In an election campaign, every constituency has meetings or rallies at which candidates tell the people about their party's policy and their plans for the future. They explain what they will try to do if they are elected. The different candidates have posters made to advertise themselves and to influence people to vote for them. There are also radio and television broadcasts and newspaper articles in which the candidates and the political parties set out their party's policies. The following video gives an example of what takes place at rallies. The last election where ministers will have responsibility for elections because we will create an elections commission and boundaries commission that will be independent of government interference and implement a fixed date for elections. We're going to cause West Grand Bahama to be a city of gold, a city. Can you tell me? A city of opportunity, a city of equity, a city where we will have proper schools for our kids, where we will have proper jobs for our people, where we will have proper housing for our people, where they will never ever have to go through what they've gone through. I have given all I can and I will give my life to ensure that my people get what they want. Prime Minister the Honorable Perry Christie says this election will decide if the country goes forward or back. On election day, the sale of alcohol is banned to make sure that every voter thinks clearly before voting. Schools, church halls, and other public buildings are used as polling stations where people go to vote. At the polling station, each voter shows his or her voter's card, which is proof of registration. And their name is crossed off the voters list. This is to ensure that each voter only votes once. Also on election day, the voter is then given a special ballot, dips his or her thumb in the indelible ink and enters the polling booth. There, the voter marks an X on the ballot 
beside the name of the candidate he or she is supporting, folds the paper over, and drops it into the ballot box. This is a secret ballot, which means that no one else knows how the voter vote. When the polling station closes, the votes are counted for the first time. This is called the preliminary return. Votes are counted in front of many people to make sure that there is no cheating. A day or two later, the votes are counted again to double check the results. The candidate who wins most of the votes secures the constituency for his or her party. The party that wins most constituencies or seats in parliament wins the election and becomes the government party. Here is a diagram of the 2017 elections results. Currently, there are 39 members of parliament. The red represents the Free National Movement, 33. They had 35, but over the years, two candidates identify themselves as independent. The yellow represents the Progressive Liberal Party, four seats in Parliament. In the Bahamas, elections are usually peaceful. Voters exercise their right to vote, choose a leader with little or no trouble. But in some countries, people are threatened if they do not vote for a particular party. And in these places, election day may be marked with violence. Let's recap some important facts from today's lesson. Question number one, what are voting areas in the Bahamas called? Is it A, constituencies, B, constitution? If you said constituencies, you are correct. Which of the following was the First, political party form. A, Free National Movement. B, Progressive Liberal Party. The correct answer is the Progressive Liberal Party. How many constituencies are there currently in the Bahamas? A, 35, B, 39. The answer is 39. Very good students. As we conclude today's lesson, let's read the steps leading to a general election together starting with parliament dissolved, secondly, election day announced, thirdly, nomination day, fourth, campaign, and finally, election day. Awesome job, students.